Respected listeners, tonight is the first night of the month of Zil Hijjah, and today is the last day of the month of Zul Qada. Tonight and the coming 10 nights and the coming 10 days are very precious in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given these days a lot of significance and importance and has blessed these days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need to take an oath. Allah does not need to swear on any command or any of his sayings to us. But to show how important these 10 days and 10 nights are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, swears, takes a note saying, Wal fajr, walayalin ashr. By the dawn, by the fajr time, and by the 10 nights, majority of the mufassireen, the commentators of the Quran, say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the first 10 days and nights of the month of Zul Hijjah. Wal fajr, swearing by the fajr time, by the dawn, the Mufassirin, the commentators say Allah is swearing by the morning, the Fajr of the day of Eid, the 10th day of Arafah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa encouraged us to increase our worship in these 10 days and 10 nights. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, <clears throat> whoever fasts in these nine days before the Eid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him or her a reward for one fast as if they fasted the entire year. Whoever worships in these nights, the nine nights of Zil Hijjah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, they will get a reward as if they have worshipped in the night of Laylatul Qadr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam also said that whoever fasts on the ninth day of Zil Hijjah, the day of Arafah, which falls not this Sunday but the coming after after the coming Sunday, the day before Eid. Eid is on Monday, the day of Arafah is on Sunday, the ninth day of Zil Hijjah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever fasts on the ninth day of Zil Hijjah, the day of Arafah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, al Hajju Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. The entire Hajj comes down to the day of Arafah. Whoever fasts on this day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I have every hope in Allah's mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sins of that person of this year that is going by and the new year that is going to start after this month of Zil Hijjah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sins of that new year of the coming year too so all of us respected brothers if we cannot fast fast two or three days of course some brothers and sisters fast the entire nine days maybe we fast a day or two before the day of Arafah, but the day of Arafah, all of us, it should become like our second nature, me, my wife, my children, all of us are going to fast the ninth day of Arafah. This should become a part of our life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne comes to the lowest sky, lowest heaven on the day of Arafah, and Allah's abundant mercy de descends upon the hajis on the day, on the grounds of Arafah on that day. And because of that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged us not to clip our nails or hairs in these next nine days until the day of the Eid, day of the Qurbani, the morning of the Qurbani. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith reported by Ibn Majah rahmatullah alayhi, that it is not right for a person it is not right for a person to cut his nails, to clip his nails or cut his hairs until the morning of the day of Qurbani, if he is giving Qurbani. He is not right for him to clip his nails or cut his hairs. And the wisdom behind this, Allah's abundant mercy descending on the grounds of Arafah is not just confined to the grounds of Arafah on the Hajis. Allah's abundant mercy is looking for ways excuses to cover envelop whoever resembles the haji when a person doesn't cut his hairs doesn't clip his nails in these nine days he's pretty much resembling hajis urdu if somebody understands urdu the poet says tere mahboob ki ya rab shabahat lekar aaya hu haqeeqat tu isko kar de main surat lekar aaya hu oh allah i have 
I'm trying to copy your beloved, the Hajis who are on the grounds of Arafah, oh Allah, I'm not cutting my nails, not cutting my hairs. Make this reality, oh Allah, for just me copying your beloved Hajis on the day of Arafah, oh Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us, respected listeners, some of us sitting here have already done Hajj. Those who have not done Hajj, let's make intention. Because this journey of Hajj reminds of our journey to death and the journey to the life of the hereafter. That is how profound this Hajj is. It reminds us of the sacrifices of the family of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, Hajra alayhi salam. It reminds us of our tremendous undescribable love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it also describes our relationship as a, between a slave and a master which our salat totally personifies every action in our salat total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every cell and fiber of our body submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially when you're in the position of prostration in the sujood and prostration so these days and this month, respected listeners, month of Hajj, Al Hajju Asharum Malumat, Faman Farata Fihina Fil Hajj, Fala Rafata Wala Fusuka Wala Jidala Fil Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these days of Hajj. You know. Let's all make intention rest. Man Arad al Hajj, Falayat Ajjal, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever desires to do Hajj, let him or her hurry up, hasten to do Hajj because Prophet Wasallam said you do not know what the future is, is in store for you your health your financial status the transportation the time the condition circum circumstances that come to you so you better hurry up if you can afford to do Hajj you better hurry up said Prophet Wasallam. sickness may overtake you health reasons may prevent you shaitan will never tell us not to do Hajj respected listeners shaitan will say do it next year do it next year or he will put in our hearts let me become more pious than I will go to Hajj that is this is all a distraction from shaitan Deception from shaitan. We go to hajj to purify ourselves. Raja'aka yomi walada tu ummu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when a person does hajj, he or she is like a mother had just given birth to him or her. Pure. No sins at all. Ibrahim bin Adam rahmatullah alayhi is going for hajj. He's walking from a neighboring country to Saudi Arabia to, to do hajj from Iraq. Or, or Iran at that time. A young man on a horse going to Hajj comes, comes to ask him, Oh Ibrahim, where are you heading to? Can I give you a ride? He said, I don't need a ride. I have enough rides with me. So where are you heading to? He said, I'm going to Hajj. He said, Are we going to Hajj on foot? But Allah says in the Quran, Hajj is prescribed for those who can afford and have the transportation to do Hajj. I don't see any transportation with you. Listen to the response of Ibrahim bin Adam, rahmatullahi respected listeners. He's not just talking to him, he's talking to all of us. He's saying, what do you mean I don't have transportation? Whenever any difficulty and calamity, affliction comes my way, I ride on the conveyance of patience. Whenever good things, Allah blesses me with some good things, I ride on the conveyance of gratitude and being thankful to Allah. Whenever shaitan comes and distracts me to do something evil, I ride on the conveyance of istighfar, begging forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever any greatness of the material things comes into my heart, I ride on the conveyance that Allah is great. I immediately say, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. No one is greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing can be greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The young man, tears in his eyes, I do not have any of those spiritual conveyances with me. We need to carry this in every day of our lives, respected listeners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make our lives easy with these spiritual conveyances. And Hajj, and Hajj is not dependent on, on the bank balance we have that I can afford to do Hajj. Hajj is totally based on the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For 800 years, 
kings, Mughal emperors, the richest men on the planet Earth at that time, many of them were not able to go to do Hajj. Didn't they have money with them? Didn't they have conveyance and transportation with them? A man comes and knocks on the door of Malik bin Dinar, Rahmatullah, Junaid Baghdadi, Rahmatullah. A young man in his early 20s or mid 20s, maybe, he comes and knocks on his door and he says, Please help me. And tears in his eyes. He says, Come inside, what can I do? Can I get you some food? He says, No, no, I'm not hungry. Can I get you some money, whatever I can afford to give it to you? No, he says, No, I want to go to Hajj. I want to go do Hajj, but I don't have money with me. I can't afford to do Hajj. He says, Then that's good. Well and good. You don't have to worry doing Hajj because Hajj is not obligatory upon you. He says, But no, I really want to go do Hajj. I can't rest without doing Hajj. I want to go visit the house of Allah. I want to visit all those holy places in Mecca and Medina. He says, But help me. He says, You've come, you're a poor man. You've come to a poor man to ask for help. He puts his hand in his pocket, Junaid Baghdadi, Rahmatullah, gives him a dirham. Dirham is like a dollar today, or maybe a few dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. He says, What am I going to do with this dirham? He says, Go. He leaves his house and then he enters a street. All the people who are going for Hajj have gathered. In those days, they used to gather at one place and they go do Hajj and come back and gather at the same place and depart from that place. All the people are ready to go to Hajj. They're welcoming him. Come, come, let's all go together. He says, I can't. I don't have any money with me. No, 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 no. Now Allah's system comes into motion with the talab and desire of a person to do Hajj. He says, one of the richest men in Baghdad has died. He does not have any family members and in his inheritance is written whoever enters from this street at this particular time duration gets all his wealth and you have entered all this wealth belongs to you he says what am i going to do with this wealth but anyway he goes to do hajj does hajj thanks allah cries to allah begs forgiveness from allah comes back to, from hajj to the same spot in baghdad his wealth is waiting for him they say take your wealth with you he says what am i going to do with the wealth you all take my wealth. People, they were not greedy at that time. They said, no, this is your wealth. It's on your name. You keep it. He takes the wealth, goes and knocks on the door of Junaid Baghdadi, Rahmatullah alayhi. Junaid Baghdadi opens the door, Rahmatullah and he says, oh, Junaid, he feels happy, gives him hug. Did you bring anything from Hajj? Any dates? Any zamzam for me? He says, forget about dates and zamzam. Look at all the wealth I have brought to you. Because of you, I got all this wealth. That one dirham you gave me, Allah gave me all this wealth. Junaid Baghdadi got, gets really upset at him. He says, by Allah, I, by Allah, I kicked wealth for 40 years when he came to me. I stayed away from wealth because of the corruption and rebelliousness it brings. I stayed away from the wealth for 40 years and I stayed away from sins and I stayed in obedience to Allah for 40 years. You're going to come and give me this wealth at this time? Leave immediately. He says, please, I'm sorry. I seek your forgiveness. Leave. He leaves with his wealth. Then Junaid, please come back. He says, come back for a second. He says, oh, maybe he's going to forgive me. He says, please give the dirham back to me. He says, the dirham, one dirham, can I keep it with me? He says, no, with this dirham, 23 people went to do hajj and came back, including you. Give that dirham back to me. He says, if that is the case, let me keep this dirham. Then Allah, this is the point I want to tell you, respected listeners. Dirhams, money, doesn't take us to hajj. He says, by Allah, it was not my dirham. It was not Junaid. It was not his words. It was not his piety. It is Allah who took you to hajj. La ilaha illallah. If you rip open my heart, my, open up my heart, you will see nothing but Allah in my heart and the obedience of Allah in my heart. He takes the dirham and throws it far away that nobody can get the dirham. We all make dua to res Allah respected listeners. Oh Allah, take me to your house. Make me do hajj, oh Allah. Allah doesn't look at our wealth, our status or anything. Allah looks at the desire of our hearts, respected listeners. Even if we are poor, even if we are not able to do hajj, Allah will make us rise on the day of judgment along with the hajis whose, has, whose hajj has been accepted. A person will stand up on the day of judgment. A poor man, he will see so many hajjis written in his name. He will say, oh Allah, 
I was a poor man. I didn't do any of this Hajj. Why so many Hajj in my account? Oh Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because you made those sincere intentions to do Hajj, even though you couldn't afford it, but your heart was sincere, your intentions were sincere. You asked Allah, you begged Allah, I'm giving you all these rewards. May Allah make us among those who go to do Hajj, respected listeners. Let's, let's hasten up. Let's hurry up. It's not going to get easier. As the years go by, I was in California. I came in the mid-90s. Late 90s, I remember on the walls of the masjid board, whole Hajj package. There was competition among the groups who used to take the people for Hajj. Whole Hajj package, $4,995. $4,995. dollars I would say, why are they not making it round figure 5000 are they playing with the psychology minds of the people? It's about 4,000 plus. But now how much is it? 20 grand, close to 20 grand per person. Restrictions in visa, visas, infrastructures has increased, the areas of tawaf, the areas of sa'i. Everything is getting difficult, respected listen. And it's going to get more difficult as the years go by. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us do hajj, go to hajj as quickly as possible and fulfill the obligatory act Owed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will conclude with this. Malik bin Dinar rahmatullah came out of his house in Iraq, in, ba in Basra, in Iraq. Extremely hot, humid. He could not see any human beings. Even the birds had taken refuge in the, in the, sh in the shelter of the branches. Then he sees a young man, both his feet missing. Clothes on his hand, because in those days there were no wheelchairs that would put clothes on their hands and drag themselves on the streets. He sees a young man coming towards in his direction. He waits for this young man, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as -salam. He says, where are you coming from? He says, coming from Allah. People, when they get into the spiritual levels, coming from Allah. Where are you going? Going for Hajj? Going for Hajj? You don't have a conveyance. How, do, how are you going to Hajj like this? He says, oh, and he says, come to my house, stay, take a break. His skin has turned red with the heat. Come to my home, take rest. I have a good camel, I'll give it to you. Go do hajj on the camel. He says, oh, Malik bin Dinar, I thought you were an intelligent man. What do you think? Allah will prefer a person coming on a comfortable ride, begging forgiveness from him, or a person dragging himself from this country all the way to Kaaba, holding the cloth of Kaaba and begging forgiveness from Allah for his sins. You know, I was thinking, what sins does this man have? Whole feet missing, two feet missing. Young man, what sins could he have had, respected listeners? Nothing but his, his status being elevated in paradise because of the trials he's going through without his two feet. But he has a desire, the talab, the greatness of Allah in his heart. I'm seeking forgiveness of Allah, dragging myself to attract that special mercy of Allah upon me. He disappears from the sight of Malik bin Dinar, drags himself away. Malik bin Dinar says, that year I had an opportunity to do Hajj. I did my all the rites of Hajj. When on the day of the Eid, on, after I threw the stones, rocks at the Shaitan, at Mina, I saw a group of people surrounding someone. I went to the group, see what's going on. And they were, everybody was looking at this young man, making amazing dua to Allah, speaking in strange, amazing words, Oh Allah, everybody came, Oh Allah. You gave me an opportunity, O oh Allah. With the tawfiq you gave me, ability you gave me, I did sa'i, I held the cloth of Kaaba. I went to Mina, Muzdalifa, threw rocks, did everything, O oh Allah. Now these people have goats, camels to give sacrifice. I don't have anything to give sacrifice to you, O oh Allah. All I have is the cloth of ihram on me, O oh Allah. They gave those animals to sacrifice to you. I give my life to you, O Allah. Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. He says the words, the kalima, and his soul is taken away. Malik bin Dinar hears a voice. This is a friend of Allah. This is a martyr, shaheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Malik bin Dinar says, I took the responsibility to give him bath, to shout him, to bury him. I did all that. That night, I couldn't get sleep. I was thinking about the young man. Who is this guy? That night, I had a dream. In the dream, I saw a young man. I asked him, how did you fare in front of Allah? He said, Allah, I found Allah very generous and rewarding. He said, Allah gave me more reward than the reward of the battles of the, of the battle of other martyrs. He says, how so? He said, they died. 
at the swing of the sword of the infidels. I died with the swing of the sword of the love of Allah. Even though he could never attain the status of the companions of the Prophet. But one action of him, one action of him, his love, his submission, his desire, elevated his status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make, give us that, that, that fraction of that respected listeners. We ask Allah to give his love to be asked Allah to make us submit ourselves to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq, ability to bring all the things which would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah make us maximize his nine days to get even more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.